just want to say how uh, you know happy I am to speak with you guys. Um, since our, the last time we spoke, I you know just kept track of what you guys were putting out, and um, there's something. It's weird. Like every time, like I go through, um, I interview somebody. There's a, a sentence that comes to my head for every everybody I. Um, I interview about their art and the the one thing that came to my head at the end of you know looking everything up and seeing what you guys got going down is that your guys' music is a release of the mind that's what I feel and it's music that makes your soul flutter um, nice <laughs> and the only reason I, I think that is because in most music it's it's like I have a connection with my body to the music. And in this music, I feel a connection with my soul. Like my soul can disattach from my body to be in your guys' music. And you, it's not every day you experience that. So I want to definitely say um, thank you for the art. Thank you, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah amazing. Thank you. So um, an album, uh, you, guys, you guys have an album coming out called Thanks for Coming um it, is it's it out already our, out it's already out yeah yeah it's been out for for a while now i think like a, I don't know how long yeah, has it been it's out? already out but it feels like a long coming out party <laughs> i mean you know because we're kind of low-key people are still discovering it you know as if it's brand new um when you guys are when you guys are creating this what like we know that, or I know from a future in, or a past interview I've done with you guys that you guys did this, like just, hey, we should do an album or we should do a band. And you guys finally got together, did the band. When you guys are creating this, what is the main goal that you guys are meaning to do? Like, what, it, what is the, the, the main goal behind your art? Hmm. I think it's just to keep showing up and 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 to to make sure we're we're there for whatever emerges. You know, I don't. Um, Matt, <laughs> Matt, you froze. Yeah, yeah, I feel I feel the same way. Like I don't, I don't think that we necessarily have a goal, or or even that um yeah that there's like a goal, but yeah, it's more like appreciating what. The three of us bring out of each other um or sort of acting as a conduit for um for whatever that is so um well, another thing i noticed is the the visuals of your guys's videos are it, it transforms you right it, it, it really takes you into a different um uh, mind space uh, what was the idea with Nevertheless, the video Nevertheless? It's so fun. It's just a fun video and, and the music just guides you. Um, how'd you guys come up with that concept? Yeah, that was that was mostly, um, it was our friend Dylan Greenberg who, who kind of came up with the most of it, most of the concept. And... Um, we were just kind of along for the ride, really. Um, you know, Dylan is a, a director who we love and um, who has a band. And uh, we were just like, just, just how does this, how does the song make you feel? And that's kind of what Dylan presented to us. And, um, and it was just perfect in every way. We were like, done, love it. Yeah, there, there was just something Dylan intuited about the song that was, you know, maybe maybe the specifics weren't exactly what each of us had in mind. I don't even know what Peter and Matt have in mind when they think of Nevertheless, but there was something about what Dylan proposed that felt completely right in terms of the, the sensibility. And I liked that while it's obviously kind of dark and scary it's also got an element of, of camp and and fun and silly silliness about it at the same time which uh, 
feels right for us. <laughs> Yeah, it, I'll just add that quickly that it reminded us of like old school MTV videos when, yes. when, Dylan, when Dylan first showed it to us. So we were really excited that he they were able to tap into that. Um, another video, I think you guys are uh, promoting a single right now at Tomorrow Screams. Uh -huh. And with that video, the shots in that video to me were, were amazing. Um, and even the opening note of that song it just it triggers me to go um and it sort of in a way it's heartwarming and reminds me of my childhood those are the notes i have on it um th in that that video i got two, for two questions for the song with the opening note like is that something that's like right, we're starting with this or is it something that we finish the song and like oh check this out should we start like this how, how did that question. how did that happen do you, do you um, remember yeah way? i i think um it started like i wanted this feeling that it the song just snowballed and so it really could have started with any one of those melodies that kind of come in but that that kind of weird like oboe-ish sounding synth um made a good initial like hello you know opening to the song so i think you know it it just was simple and it it uh it shared the chord progression in a really innocent way and then everything else was able to like build on it and uh yeah that would be the answer to that and that's so another video sorry go ahead man oh no go go ahead I, i'll ask oh. him after. all right so um that's another video where, you know, we just um, gave license to a friend and artist, Lexi Moreland, in this case, who we who we love and trust. And, and she had her sort of vision for the song. And um, we just went with it. You know, I was uh, I was in that house in rural, somewhat rural Massachusetts, suburban Massachusetts, really. Um, and the guys came up and Lexi came up and um, yeah, we just spent a weekend um, as her guinea pigs in this sort of, yeah, it does feel like um, a, a, a nostalgic um, feeling of childhood, unsupervised sort of aimless play. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there, there's something about it that um, I don't know, she, she managed to capture something um about how it feels to be uh, in the band <laughs> yeah and, and also she created something that i felt was so copacetic with the the sound the visual really matched the the stories that she was telling matched the the feeling in the song like perfectly i thought that was kind of remarkable actually that lexi was able to nail that you know and I'm an 80s kid, so like the when I first heard that opening, you know, synth go, I immediately got transformed back to you know the late 80s where I'm watching. I'm not sure if you guys remember a television show called Monsters. It's like a yeah. weekly episodic mm -hmm. television show, and they go, "Oh, candy critters!" Like the little girl and it's her dad it looks like a. So it re really reminded me of that. Uh, the opening line and then like you said it just snowballs and it it, it transforms you into this you know uh, a part of my brain that hasn't been unlocked for years uh, with my childhood and and I know exactly what it's like to be climbing those trees to going through the forest and into doing you know uh, throwing rocks in the creek I mean I, that was my life and it's sort of like have you seen that movie ratatouille where yeah. the the, the guy the ratatouille in his... where he takes a bite of the strawberry and then the cheese oh yeah and then it's a combination he just gets oh my god this is you know or even when uh linguini eats the the ratatouille for the first time he goes back to his yeah. childhood yeah yeah that's it, that's what it felt like to me and i was what, um, it, it does, you don't have music nowadays that makes you feel anymore and 
that's why I'm so excited to, to, to get into your guys' brains about this. What else do you like to listen to, Tim? I'm just curious what other stuff you're listening to. Um, I literally listen to everything. So on my playlist, I have a little bit of uh, hip hop with Super Duper Kyle. Um, I love um, uh, a band, uh, Pink Floyd. I'm a really big Pink Floyd guy. Um, anything on Sirius Alt Nation, uh, you know, probably 2015 through 2018, um, things like that. Right. Cool. 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 What do you guys listen to? Like, just uh, what's on your playlist right now? I mean, we, we've been getting into, in terms of new bands, there's a band from Colombia called Bomba Estéreo. I don't know if you know about them, but um, we kind of love them. Um, they're like psychedelic cumbia music. Um, we just saw Idols play twice in New York City, and that was amazing. Idols. I don't know if you like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, That's like new newer kind of stuff and i don't know and then in terms of older stuff just so much i mean it's too it. much. yeah <laughs> well you know we, we all love black sabbath a lot and um my friend came to the show last night and he was like you know seeing you guys live i i really understand the black sabbath influence a lot more because it was it was so heavy and i was like yeah cool yeah. that's sick uh pete what about you i mean i i also grew up in the 80s and i don't know i i was just thinking about this question i uh i like almost i like so much music that it's hard to like pin it down and me too my father's a jazz musician i love jazz as well i love metal i love pop I love acoustic, like Dylan and Neil Young. I love that stuff. I, I love it all, so it's hard, you know. It but is. when I especially like to rock, it's just fun to rock when you when you get the opportunity to play live. So that's that's where my tastes land for in, inspiration for live live show stuff. But um, I like it all. You brought up your father, and I, I read some somewhere uh, Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, he's a jazz composer and a cardiologist. Yeah, that, so he has like, that side of his brain just unlocked. Yeah, that's like numbers and do, do you have that side unlocked as well? I went to college and I was gonna. I went. I was pre med and I just after my first couple chemistry classes, I was like, "Fuck this!" Like, <laughs> and just went full on into music. And my dad was like, "I called my dad in the middle of like a chemistry lab." on the break and I just was like dad I'm not going to be a doctor and he was like that's cool you should just do what you love and I was like okay I'm gonna play music which is also sort of like my dad so he was happy but I'm sure a little scared too no I, I don't I'm not pretty bad at math and uh which is funny because I'm a drummer but I, I could do simple math I was an English major yeah um you know, when I'm like I always wish I had that that side unlocked because I, I was the same way. I was in pre-med. Uh, I wanted to be a anesthesiologist and that math fucking whooped my ass. I mean, I can put in literally, I would, I would stay up till four o'clock in the morning with eight o'clock class, just doing math studying, still got a D in it. So I said, mm, maybe I should just talk to people for a living and be a loser, not a doctor. <laughs> Um, and Matt, you were, you're a, you were trained classically as a violinist. Yeah. Oddly enough in high school, I, um, I played violin at, at the music and art LaGuardia music and art school, um, which people know is the famed school in New York city. And I was in the to live forever. Yeah. Yeah. I want to fly. Yeah. I wanna Hi. Live Sorry. Hi. Hi. Yeah. And um, yeah. And that was that was a great time. It was a lot of fun. You know, I loved it. it what made you gravitate towards violin in high school? Because I'm imagining you're probably in high school in the 80s, 90s, 90s. Yeah, 90s. Actually. And and when you're like 
in the 90s, I mean, there's all these influential rock people and you went after a violin, which is nothing wrong with that. A violin and saxophone are my favorite instruments. However, yeah. it's a little yeah. bit different. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I started on piano, then I switched on to guitar, which was my, my passion. And then in at, at my high school, they had no guitar program. They didn't recognize guitar. They were only interested in classical music, really. So I said, all right, I can't, if I can't play guitar, I'll play violin. I mean, that's the next, the next best thing, really, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, I've tried to play violin for years, man. I'm horrible. It goes back to that math thing, I probably. Man, because <laughs> literally for two years, every time I would come home from work, I would come home from work, take off my shoes, sit at my fireplace and try to play the violin with YouTube up. Just YouTube and, man. Yeah, violin is really... It's hard and it's it's just a tough, tough thing. And it's not very rewarding just to be a violin player. I mean, you kind of need other people to mm -hmm. be a violin player. I but Matt, could you play could you play violin if you had one handy? I mean, could you still play it? Yeah, I could probably play like something. I don't know. I don't know what. Like something by the Beatles, you know. Dun, 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 dun. It would sound like that, you know. I would always get like I want to go like this like because I'm seeing other people do that but like I don't even know what to say yeah yeah <laughs> it's not the way it looks like the play the way you play it isn't the way it looks like it's played yeah I know I know it's it's tough it's not easy it's not easy yeah people should play guitar or keyboard that, that's easier those are easier yeah. I'm, I started doing keyboard after the violin I'm okay at that. Yeah. Michael Myers theme song. I can do that. Thanks. Um, so I have the last time we talked, we talked about psychedelics, how like we were sort of asking, is it is there an influence in it? Um, and it was sort of it seemed like you guys were being a little coy with it. Um, not so I guess my question this time was what has psychedelics taught you? And we can not talk about it. We cannot bring this up. That's fine as well. I'm just curious. Because it seemed like there was a story, like when I was, when we were talking about it the last time, and I just didn't pry in on it. Was it around a conversation about ketamine? Yes. That song? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think maybe at that point I was being kind of coy about what the song was about. Um, but I guess I sense have given up on that. <laughs> It's basically it, that specific song is about a, a therapeutic ketamine treatment I did with my then girlfriend, now wife, Morgan, in which we side by side in a psychiatrist's office were injected with a ketamine um, treatment that like took us down for like an hour. And we both went on this mind adventure. And I was very much aware that I was having a much sort of easier, breezier, free floating experience than she was. She was having a hard time. She was struggling and I could feel it. And um, so the song is about that. Um, as far as psychedelics more broadly, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely um, fascinated by them. I don't have enough extensive experience with them with um you know, I mean, I've I've had my 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 little my dalliances with with uh, um, recreational psychedelic use, you know, but the the idea of doing it with a with a really um, doing those drugs with with somebody to 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 preside over it with a really um, specific set and setting and a goal in mind. I mean, that's a very interesting thing to me, you know, the idea of incorporating that. But, you know, I, I do think that a psychedelic experience, if it, if it provides some sort of insight, it might be a shortcut um, that isn't hard won in the way someone might come to such an insight through years of just diligent meditation or prayer or whatever you call it. Um, and, um, you know, you can't maybe be totally ready to absorb in a lasting way the um, profound insights of a psychedelic experience if you just 
what did that one instance shortcut? What did that one instance teach you? Um, I mean, for me, it was uh, I was I was I was a little bit um, trepidatious about it. I thought maybe it would be a dark experience. And, you know, maybe if I did it again, uh, it would be, but my experience was that there was, um, there was a, an interior landscape that I found myself exploring that was um, a lot more um, technicolor and fun and surprising and any secrets that were revealed were like encouraging ones and um and there was a moment in in one where i broke out of that and the break into the sky image is a a reference to an experience i had on the drug where i sort of lifted above what felt like a cloud cover and was just in it was just pure um white light and i was neither being held up nor pushed down. I was just flying. And, uh, but not in a sort of like really intense way in a completely like serene and weightless way. Um, so it was encouraging, I think, you know, discovering that there were, there were, there were internal rooms that were in the, in the nightclub of my <laughs> interior that were uh, a little less of a dungeon than I was afraid they were going to be. Did you learn anything specifically as, um, or did you take anything away from that experience um, as in regards to your, your journey as a human being? Um, I mean, I think the most valuable takeaway was that I did it alongside my beloved, you know, and I was, um, I was, I was lost in the experience, but I was sort of with her as well. And there was one of the two times where it was really bad. And I actually kind of tried to leave whatever my trip was and, and try to intuit hers. I think it solidified a connection I have with her as much as anything. That's awesome. That's fucking dope. I love that. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let me see what else I got here. Uh, oh, oh, I wanted to say Too Cool to Care is my favorite song. Uh, that's my favorite song on the album um out of all the songs like good job nice um uh, okay so i have oh oh uh, another thing i know i'm just curious because you guys are very thought out well um uh if it, it, it feels to me you guys are very like your art is really thought out and I might be wrong. You guys might just be, this is art. Is there any Easter eggs to look for in the album or on uh, any of the videos that the, the casual fan might not see? I would say one is right at the top of the record. Um, the bombed out sites, you know, that's the track that starts, that starts the record, right? Yeah. It's the, the first track. The second song. Yeah, there's like yeah, a, it's the bro. second. It's oh the yeah, yeah, bombed proper. outside. The second song. Yeah, that song. Um, the beat, the bass, the beat and the bass line uh, were created by Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys. Oh, this shit. is kind of yeah, and uh, he had done a remix for me several years ago of one of my own songs, and I loved it, but I never really released that song. And so I never really had use for the remix. I still might put it out at some point, but um, cause it's really, it is really dope. But I took, I, I was just messing around one day in the studio and I was, I found, I stumbled on the remix and I was listening to it and I was like, wow, this is really hypnotic. And, and then I looped one bar of it, uh, just one, one measure of it, I looped in Pro Tools. And it, I found that it really, that particular loop, especially, I never got tired of it. So I was, uh, I was just messing with it. Mike heard it, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I got a melody for that." And then, and I'll, and then, then this story came about, came out from him about his motorcycle, Hong Kong, and uh, and it just matched perfectly with this sort of floating, 
music bed. And, and it, I wrote to Adrock and I was like, Hey, you know, can we use this, re this sample? He's like, yeah, use whatever you want. Like don't even have to credit me or anything. And so that's awesome. So we built that song on an ad rock loop and that's kind of a secret little thing that not many people know about actually. That's fucking awesome. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> something like that. Hey Tim, so, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we only have time for about one or two more questions. Okay. Um, all right, let's... Uh, Let's do this one. I have two questions. The first one is, what is your dream concert, alive or dead? Four people, one headliner. Um, and then the, the second question is going to be, what is your mom or and dad's signature dish? Oh, shit. <laughs> well, should we, should we bang out the concert together? We, Kaius would be a good one, just because they got to get back together. Um, yeah, I would see uh, I would see Dylan on the Rolling Thunder review tour in the in the seventies. Yeah. Matt, you probably have more with them. Um, <laughs> and uh, so you so you're uh, saying like, uh, but then we have to come up with openers too. No, it's just four people, four just four, and then one of them is going to be the headliner. It's your right. choice. Purple, um, Purple Rain, Purple Rain or Prince. I would love to see that in concert. Me too. That's on my list. Yeah. So Purple Rain, Rolling Thunder set, Kaya Scream Machine, maybe, or whatever they want to play, actually. And yeah. one more. Joni Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, Joni, just, just intimate acoustic Joni. Yeah, yeah. She could just come out there with just her guitar and blow everybody away. Yeah. All right. And then the last one is what is your mom or and dad's signature dish? Hmm. My mom, Betty, makes a really good potato latke. Just going to put it out there. A little potato pancake. It's like a Jewish. Um... No, I know. I know it is. Uh, I have wait, a, we, we have a big Jewish community out where my wife was raised. Where, where are you, by the way, Tim? I'm in Ventura. But uh, my wife was raised in Agora Hills. Speaking of Ventura, I used to go to Jewish camp um, in Ojai every summer, like when I was a kid. Like You did? Yeah, there's a oh, Jewish camp called, called Camp Ramah that my parents were smart enough to send me to from Utah. So I got to be around all these Southern California Jews. And I learned all about pubic hair and stuff and <laughs> it's a good place it was a really good place <laughs> uh matt <laughs> mom or dad's signature dish signature dish um my dad was always he was he was the chef really um so i would say french toast was his big thing um and uh and ravioli and mike uh, Domino's. <laughs> yes, that's my mom's. It was amazing. My mom, my mom. Yeah, we. Yeah, it was a, a fantasy. Just a lot of really good fast food. I mean, she cooked, but I would. It was, it was a signature dish. I would say. <laughs> Gentlemen, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you for for you know. Uh, being with us today and i'm just, thank you for your art so thank you yeah thank you man yeah. thanks for your kind words I, I i love the way you describe your experience with the music it's like couldn't think of a better description well i get it i get it i get what you guys are trying to do and good luck be safe out there and hopefully you guys thanks, will come home soon all right yeah. all right man have a good one thanks thank you guys right. thank you katie yeah Thanks. Bye-bye.